Watch me go through the best enduro warm-up. Um, so one of the problems that happens with a lot of enduro races is you don't get a lot of warm-up time or practice time before you go and race. And so the problem with that is you spend the first 10, 15, 20 minutes, half an hour, maybe up to an hour for some of you, actually just getting warm and getting comfortable on the bike. Um, and obviously when you're racing, like if you're doing a three-hour enduro and you spend an hour of that just trying to warm up and trying to feel good, you're not putting yourself in the best position to have a good race and actually do your best. So in this video, I'm going to show you um, the exact enduro warm-up that I recommend and use with our riders and racers, um, and then hopefully you can implement it um, into your own riding and improve your riding performance. So first thing that we want to do, um, especially on mornings uh, when we're going to do an enduro, most of the time it's probably be, going to be on the colder side. So we just want to do a general warm-up to get a little bit of warmth into your body. So if you have a jumper on, you have a jacket, or you got some pants on, you want to get to the end of that first bit of the warm up and have your heart rate up a little bit, have a little bit of a sweat happening. So I'm going to give you an example of that. And I'll just put you guys over here and we'll just adjust this so you can see a little bit better. There we go. Um, so what you can do is just something simple. Um, obviously, when you're at the track, you don't have the best resources. You don't have a full gym there to be able to you know, go and do what you want. So we've got to make things a bit, little bit user friendly as well. Um, so first thing that you could do is you could do something simple. Um, if you've been training and keeping physically active, you can do something like simple, like three rounds of 10 squats and 10 push-ups. Okay, so you can just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Okay, then you can go on the floor and bang out a few push-ups. One, two, three, four. Right, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Surprisingly hard to count during push-ups. Um, and then you can do another couple of rounds. So I can notice then, like my body's starting to feel warm, my breathing's starting to elevate, heart rate's starting to go up as well. So you can do three rounds of that. If that's still too hard for you, like if you have got a bit of extra weight that you're carrying and body weight stuff's not as easy as it is for lighter people, or you haven't been doing much training, that's probably gonna be too intense. Okay, you don't want to be doing like a full-blown workout. You just want to get your body warm. Um, so what you can do, do something simple. Like you could just jog on the spot if you wanted to. Okay, if that's easy enough. Um, if you've got a push bike at the track, go for a bit of a ride. Um, if you can go and have a look at the track and go for a walk, that can also help to get you warm as well, just walking around and moving. So you can do some um, circles with your arms, okay? You could do smaller squats if you don't want to go all the way down. So the whole goal is we're not trying to flog you. We're not trying to wear you out. We're just trying to get some warmth in your body. Once we've done that, then what we can do, I'll we'll just move these mats over, is we can do some stretching and some mobility work. So I'll move you guys over a little bit closer over here. Might be a little bit better. We'll see. See how we go. Um, and so what we're going to do is, oh, that's definitely not good. <laughs> there you go. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to do some uh, exercises or stretches that allow us to just mobilize our joints. And pretty much what that means is we're just undoing a lot of the tightness and stiffness that a lot of us have when we spend periods of time in the car. Most of the time when we're getting out to the races, We've been in the car for a period of time, okay? And that means we start to tighten and stiffen up. So we just want to undo some of that damage as, or as much as we can. Uh, one of the common things that happens when we're sitting in the car, because we're in this position, is the front of our legs will get really, really tight. And when that gets really, really tight, what starts to happen is this tightens up and it pulls us into this extended position and starts to load up our um, lower back. That's why a lot of people tend to get sore back after they've been in the car for a bit. So if we can... Um, open up these muscles a little bit after we've been in the car, um, then that's going to help the rest of our muscles and surrounding muscles to work a little bit better and hopefully unload your lower back as well. Um, so the way, the, the best way to be able to do that is using a stretch that's called the couch stretch. Okay, the couch stretch, we get the back knee in the corner of a wall. Okay, you can use the side of your trailer, you can use anything. Okay, as long as you've got something to put that back leg on, a box, toolbox, gear bag, then we're going to get the other foot out in front. Now, some of you might not be able to do that, okay? If you can't get it get into this position, what I would do 
is move this knee forward a little bit and that'll make it easier for you. Okay, but to start off with, uh, well, for this example, we're gonna have a knee in the corner, other knees up, so that's like level one. And then level two, okay, is we're gonna get all the way up. If you can get up into this position, you're probably gonna find your hip mobility is probably quite good. If you're struggling, probably gonna find it's quite tight, but you're gonna get a lot of benefit from opening it up. So you can hold a minute on each side um, and do this for two rounds. So get your phone out, get a stopwatch, so you do exactly a minute. Um, it's funny how we tend to shortcut things when it's not the most comfortable stretch. So make sure you do the full minute. Again, get on the other side, okay? Back knee gets the wall, foot out in front, and then ultimately we're into our standing or upright position. So again, we can do two rounds, um, a minute on each side, okay? Really opening up um, the front of our legs, helps to take a bit of the load off your back, get your ass working, which is the um, powerhouse muscles for the bike. So that's that one. Next one we're gonna do, I'll bring you guys back up here. Um, so what we're gonna do here, the next one, is what we call glute bridges. So what glute bridges are, are an exercise that helps to get our ass working, okay? Now I'll just get these mats sorted so I've got some level of comfort and these are actually pretty good for the track as well. Um, when I was racing, we used to use, bring some of these down to the track, the jigsaw mats, because um, it just gives you something to sit on or to walk on. If you need to do exercise, you can do, do them on there. It just makes it a bit softer. Um, we're going to do glute bridges. So what a glute bridge is, is I'll show you the exercise, funny looking exercise. Lay on your back, um, feet about hip width. Um, we want to have our feet as close to our bum as we can get them. And then what we're going to do is we're going to push up and we're going to squeeze with our ass at the top. Really important to make sure that you're squeezing with your ass because that's the whole point of the exercise. And what we can do with them is we can do four sets of, or three sets of 10. Now, the reason that that exercise is important is because when I'm on the bike and I'm going from sitting on the seat to standing or, you know, whatever the height is, what I'm, what the main muscle group that is helping me to get up and down off the seat is we've got our quads working, our legs, but we've also got these bad boys working, okay? Hamstrings and glutes are doing a lot of the work. And what happens is when you sit down and you're in the car for long periods of time, we start to get what we call dormant glutes. And pretty much what that means is the muscles in your ass start to stop working because they haven't been working for a long period of time while you've been sitting on them. Um, and they don't just automatically turn back on. So the, what the um, glute bridges help to do is help to just wake them up and get them going again um, so that it can help you to move around more efficiently on the bike. That's the second exercise. Third one that I would do is when we're in the car, shoulders are pulled forward a lot, especially if you're driving, you've got your hands on the steering wheel, hopefully. Um, and so what happens is we get very tight around the shoulders and the shoulders get pulled forward and we get tight through the pecs. And that limits our ability on the bike to be able to use these back muscles. Because you'll notice for me to use my back muscles, I've got to pull my shoulders back. But if my shoulders are pulled forward because I'm really tight at the front, it's very hard for me to activate these big muscles at the back. And so obviously when you're riding, we want to make sure we can use these big powerhouse muscles, not just um, be relying on these smaller muscles at the front. So the way that you can help to open up these pecs, um, there's a couple of ways, but I'll give you a simple way that you could start with. Um, hopefully guys can, I might just move this camera a little bit for you guys so you can see me a little bit better. There we go. We'll see what that's like. I guess we'll find out after. So you can um, put your hands behind you, okay? And what you're going to do is almost like a bend back, like that. And what that's going to do is that's going to open up your chest and open up your shoulder. So I can feel that. I just did uh, some upper body work yesterday, so I can definitely feel that. But you'll feel it all the way through your bicep and then also through your shoulders as well, okay? And we want to try and get those hips up as far as we can to help to open up our shoulders as much as we can. So what we can do is we can do... Um, we can do three sets of, you know, eight to 10 reps of just pushing up and then coming back down, okay? Again, these exercises don't always look the best, but they definitely are effective. Um, if that exercise is too hard for you, again, if you're carrying a bit of extra weight or you don't do too much training and that's too aggressive, what you can do is something a little bit less aggressive um, and just do some windmills with your arms, okay? Back, uh, backwards and forwards. You can go uh, 10 forwards, okay? Go 10 backwards and do that for two or three rounds. 
Um, and so that way we're taking care of most of the areas of the body that are going to be affected from you um, spending a bit of the time in the car and being jammed up um, and that tend to be tight for most riders. Once we've done that, we've done our warm up. Okay, general warm up at the start, getting warm. We've done some stretches. If you are someone who, um, or if you're at a race where you aren't able to do much riding before the actual race, in other words, like it's an enduro and you just got to get out there and go, you probably want to do something to get your forearms warm. Okay. Um, a lot of you that suffer from type one arm pump, which is where you get arm pump at the start of the ride and it gets better. It means you've got a problem with warming up. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to get these muscles as warm as we possibly can without actually riding the bike. Cause obviously you can't ride. So there's a few things that we can do. First thing that we can do is we can just do simple exercises or stretches like this. Okay. So put your hands facing towards you. We keep our elbows relatively um, stiff or lock, almost locked out. And then we're just going to slowly pull our body back. Okay. And you can feel that through your forearms. Um, so what we can do there, we can hold that for 45 seconds to a minute. Okay. And we can do both at the same time. Um, and we can do two rounds of that. Okay. The main thing is you just want to hold at the end of the stretch. Once you've done that, you can also do the front. Okay. We can go sideways like this. Now, when you're doing this front one, it can be quite aggressive. So you'll notice here, like for me, my elbows are not locked out. They're a bit softer, but that's going to help to stretch our wrists um, in the opposite direction. So again, you can do that 45 seconds to a minute, two rounds, okay? Once we've done that, to really get warmth into your wrists and into your um, arms, we can do what's called a wrist push-up. Um, what a wrist push-up is, is I'll show you what it is and then I'll explain how it works. So you go here and then we just go up into a fist, okay? And then we slowly control on the way back down. Now for this one, it's really, really important that you don't put your full body weight on there, okay? Notice that when I'm doing it, I actually don't have any, hardly any of my body weight on there, okay? I'm sitting back off my wrist because it's a very aggressive exercise. Last thing I want is for you guys to get hurt doing this. So um, we sit back off our hands and we just come up. We've got a little bit of tension, a little bit of load in there, and then same on the way down. So on the way up and then also controlling on the way down as well. And what that's going to do is just help to warm up a lot of those little um, smaller muscles and areas that are around your wrist and in your forearms so that when you get on the bike, you're not going from zero to 100, okay? You might be going from 20, 30, 40, 50 to 100 now because we've done a little bit of work to get our body ready to, um, to go and ride and go and race. So quick recap. First thing that we did is we did a general warm up. okay? Three sets of 10 um, push-ups and squats just to get your body moving. If you've got a jacket on, you wanna to get to a point where your heart rate's up and you've got your jacket off. Second thing we did is we did some stretches. We did the couch stretch over on the wall over here. We did the glute bridges. And then we also did the, um, the bend back stretch as well. Once we've done that, if we're not getting any bike time before we go and ride, we can do some, some of the, um, the wrist push-ups and the stretches for our forearms and for our wrists to make sure that our whole body is ready to rock and roll. Um, so that's it. It's really up to you now just to implement it and make it happen. Um, if you'd like some help getting rid of arm pump, improving your nutrition, um, dialing in your riding and racing fitness, apply for my Faster Laps program below. Um, otherwise, hopefully you enjoyed this video.